hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. If we did some revision of the Mendel genetics and how that works, this was the Mendel monohybrid crossings. Here we have a homozygous tall crossing of a homozygous short plant, and the result is F1 generation, and they have both the small t and the large t, so in this case it's heterozygous tall. Now if we cross the heterozygous tall to make the F2 generation, we would have a 3 to 1 generation, a 3 to 1 ratio of 3 of them being tall and 1 of them being short. This was just all the idea of the mental genetics, but if we looked at something like, for example, sex-linked genes, and co-dominance, we get a bit of different ratio. So for example, of color blindness, this here is sex-linked, and we'll go over that in a second, which means that certain sexes have it more often than other. So for example, males have it more often than females. In this case, it's eight times more likely to occur in men. Now, when we're looking at the actual mental genetics, there's no distinguishing feature between men and female. They all have the same ratio. Whereas with color blindness, for whatever reason, there are men have it more common than females. And then here in this case, we have a white rose, and we cross it with a red rose. And what we get is we get the F1 generation, which is pink. Now, with mental genetics, that should have been just either white or red, whichever one was the dominant one. In this case, they're pink. So that's also a bit odd. And I've, also, I've mentioned all this because the dot point itself says describe the inheritance of sex-linked genes and alleles that exhibit co-dominance and explain why these do not produce simple Mendelian ratios. So we're going to describe how sex-linked genes, for example, when it comes to color blindness, how that works, and how co-dominance works, which is when, for example, a red and a red rose and a white rose are crossed to produce pink roses, how that works, and why exactly that doesn't follow the usual Mendelian ratios, which were the ones we just mentioned. F1 generation being heterozygous tall in this case, with this example, and producing a 3 to 1 ratio when the F1 generations are crossed, why this doesn't happen when it, when it comes to sex-linked genes and co-dominance. I'll go over sex-linked genes first. And what we have is we have, usually we have 22 pairs of chromosomes. So these are our 22 pairs of chromosomes. These are not normal chromosomes, but we have an additional 23rd pair. And these are our sex chromosomes. These are our sex chromosomes. So we have an X and a Y chromosome, and these are, are together are our sex chromosomes. So I wrote 22 pairs of chromosomes, which were the ones I just mentioned, and then we have that additional pair of sex chromosomes, which determines what sex we become. Now, X stands for the female chromosome, and Y stands for the male chromosome. So here's the X and here's the Y, and they're named that way because they look a bit more like an X and a Y, when you look at the actual genes under a microscope and they're dividing. But what happens is they segregate during meiosis the same way as any other actual chromosome would. So in this case, it's chromosome 1. During meiosis, will, one sperm will get this one, a different sperm might get this one. Whereas the same thing with these, you know, one sperm might get the X chromosome, and one sperm might get the Y chromosome. So they segregate during meiosis when gametes are being formed. Now how this works? When it comes to gametes, is a female. If a female were to be crossed with a male, we have the two different combinations here. We have XX, which are possible alleles for female. If there's two X's, that means the actual person is a female. Whereas if there's an X and a Y, then the actual person is a male. So if it has an X and a Y chromosome, that makes it male, and two X makes it female. Now, if these were to be crossed, if, if one male has a baby with a female, that's usually the way it works as well, and men, men have babies with females, women. But if that happens, well, we can use this kind of punnett square as well for the same procedure to find out the likelihood of one of them being a female or one of them being a male. So all we have to do is we have to cross this one with this one and just do the same procedure as we would usually do with punnett squares. So this one from here, this one from there. So I'll make it in the color of the male. So the greener is a male. And in this case, X here and an X from the male. Another X from the female and a Y from the male. Y from the male and the male color. 
and a x from the female and an x from the male. So the ratio we have, we have in this case we have two females and we have two males being produced. And that's a one to one ratio, which makes sense because that means 50% likelihood of, of you having a male offspring or a boy and 50% having a female offspring or a girl, which makes sense because that's also the ratios we have usually. So 50% are females, 50% are males. And when it comes to actual genetics, you should also realize that the X chromosomes carry many more genes than the Y chromosomes. If you can see here, the X chromosome is much bigger, so it's a lot bigger, and the Y chromosome is a lot smaller. More or less, the only thing that the Y chromosome carries are your sex genes. So the fact that you know you might grow a beard or produce more testosterone and all that kind of stuff, that's carried on the Y chromosome, but there isn't much else being carried on the Y chromosome. But one thing that's also carried on the X chromosome is a cone. So a cone that's produced in your eye, and this cone that's produced in your eye allows you to see color vision, including green and red. So we have two different types of cones being produced. We have a green and a red one when everything is normal. But when there's a problem with the X chromosome, that means we have not one, but, but just, yeah, we have one of them being produced as opposed to both of them being produced. So what you can imagine is if, for example, let's say this one here, let's call this one, let's say this one's capital I'll do large B stands for normal and small B stands for colorblind. And if, for example, the female had one which was normal and one which was colorblind, the colorblind is recessive, so the colorblind is recessive, small b. And the male had none, so he had the one X he had was all good, was normal. And then it's this crossing. This X here meant that this one here had also had a small b, and this one here had a small b. So these two bits of it came from this one had small b's, and this one had a large b and a large b from the top, and all the ones that came from the male all had normal vision. Now, if you look at this, you can see in this case the females have one capital, so the females for so this one here is big B and small b. So even though he, she has color blindness, the X is actually dominant over it, so it's actually hiding it. Whereas because the males, this one doesn't count, the Y one doesn't count, doesn't count. So the, the males have just one X, and this X is actually recessive. This is the recessive X. And the problem with that is if this happens, then this person will have color blindness. Whereas a female doesn't, because the female has another X from the, that she got from the male, which had no color blindness, to overpower the recessive color blindness gene. So in this case, only males or majority of males will get color blindness, and the, like, the girls have to have two X's that are all both recessive for that trait for them to have color blindness. Whereas the boys only need one because they only have one X, and the Y doesn't give them any extra. But if you're still confused, we're going to cover that more in, in the future details. But as you can see how that's kind of not normal, how Mendel usually works a bit different. And the other was co-dominance. And co-dominance is pretty much straightforward than the other one. So here we have, uh, in co-dominance, we have no recessiveness. In Mendel genetics, we have a dominant and a recessive. In this case, we don't have a recessive-dominant relationship. They're both dominant. Both alleles are dominant. So that's the important part. And then blending occurs, which means usually the dominant one takes the phenotype, so the color or the whatever it is, is from the dominant one. But with codominance, is there's a blending, so two mix. An example would be if we have, again, a rose. So we have a homozygous red and a homozygous white rose being crossed. So that means all our capital R and capital W. And then what we do is we have R from here, from this rose, from the red rose. I'm just going to do all the R's. And we have W's from all the white roses. Now we have that RW. And usually, that would be that you know, the dominant one takes it's the hydrozygous one, but usually the dominant one takes the actual phenotype. In this case, because they're co-dominant, there's a blending, which is why these will have pink flowers, because pink is in between white and red. 
So these are all pink. And what we can do then is if we were to cross the pink flowers together, so here we're crossing two different pink flowers, what we get is we get a, so these two, red from here and red from here, and red from here and white from here, red from this one and white from this one, red from this one, white from that one, and last one is white from this one and white from this one. Now we have one red one, so homozygous red, so we have one red, we have two um, heterozygous red white ones, which are the pink ones, we have two pink ones, and we have one homozygous white, which is this one here, so we have a ratio of one red, two pink, and one white if we cross the F1 generation, which again was different because for the Mendel genetics, we had a ratio of three to one, whereas here we have one to two to one for the phenotype, and that's because this is co-dominant, so it works a bit different to normal recessive and dominant relationships. So I'll go over dot point again, it says describe the inheritance of sex-linked genes. So the sex-linked genes work this way, and you know, you've got your X and Y chromosomes, 2X means you have your female, so females always have 2X, women have 2X, and male, male or men have X and a Y. If you were to cross that, you just produce your Punnett square, and these B on the tops are just for whatever disease you're looking at. So if it is X and a big capital B, that means the X chromosome is carrying, in this case, um, the genes or the alleles for the normal vision of the eye, so normal color vision. Whereas if it were X and a B, a small b, that means that that actual gene has the recessive colorblind allele on it. So then you do the normal actual procedure, the Punnett square, and then you look at which what comes out of it. What you can usually find is if you have a recessive allele for color blindness and a Y chromosome, then the net will obviously make a boy. That boy will have color blindness. Whereas if you have a recessive X chromosome and a normal X chromosome, which is the most majority of the cases when it comes to females, it won't be colorblind because it's recessive and the dominant will take over. So for a female to be colorblind, she would have to have two recessive alleles for colorblindness, whereas a boy only has to have one, which is why it's much more likely to have for boys to be colorblind than girls. And for co-dominance, you just do the normal crossings, but just yeah, you have to ignore the fact that there's no dominant and recessive relationships. So then if we have a heterozygous one, so just these ones here, they won't have either red or white, there will be a blending of it, in this case pink, if we have red flowers and white flowers. And then if we cross them, we get a, so if we cross the two pink flowers together from the F1 generation, we get a one red to two pink to one white ratio, which is again different to our three to one ratio we got in the Mendel genetics. And the reason why was there was co-dominance, which doesn't exist in Mendel genetics. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.